Andrew, come on, man. We just need to do one push-up. Mind over matter. You said you wanted to get fit, dude. I, I don't think this is gonna work. Living glam, living rough, living with Jonathan and Katie. Welcome, Welcome to, to living, living with, with Jonathan, Jonathan and Katie. Katie. I'm Katie French, and this crystal is my best friend. I'm Jonathan Rowell, and I guess I just lost a best friend. And today we're talking about a very unusual subject. Bodybuilding. bodybuilding. Katie, what do you know about bodybuilding? I know I own upwards of one Jillian Michaels DVD. Mm. Jonathan, what do you know about bodybuilding? Not a single thing, and that's the problem with my dating life. <laughs> today we have a real live bodybuilder here with us. Natural Bodybuilding Federation champion, Dennis Horton. Thank you, pleasure to be Yay. here today. And as we can see, he came with his whole squad. <laughs> Yeah. Or basically all my exes. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so let's start with our first question. We have so many questions about this whole world that we know nothing about. Right. Do our weak bodies disgust you? Yes. Got Great. it. <laughs> okay. cool. Now what is like the goal or point of bodybuilding and these competitions? Basically we're all trying to make sure that we get the highest tips at the strip club. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's a great goal. Amen. Yeah. The goal for most guys is pro card, and then from there, magazine sponsorship. You want to win the big shows where there's professional prize money. Yeah. The other side of it is a lot of guys don't even compete. You have guys who they just want to be bigger. Mm. Some people, uh, it's an adrenaline rush to say, hey, I can bench press 500 pounds. Do you ever just take your shirt off just to kind of flex on people? Flex on people? Well, my <laughs> wife, I want my dinner now. <laughs> can you clock someone's body type just by looking at them or? For the most part. I mean, studying the body is what we do. Right. In bodybuilding, we pretty much classify three body types, yeah. ectomorph, endomorph, and a mesomorph, yeah. which means some people are, when they start, they're big people and they pretty much want to trim down on the fat and shape up. Yeah. Some people are extremely skinny and then some people are that athletic build that's right in the middle, which is considered ideal. What would I'm going to guess be? he's such an ectomorph. Yeah. Yeah, you guys would be ectomorph. What's an ectomorph? <laughs> What's an ectomorph? I don't know what it is. That's a skinny one. Oh, oh I, I think I'm just fat skinny, so that's why, you know what I mean? We call that skinny flabby. Skinny flabby. <laughs> <laughs> On a related note, how much can you bench press? The most I've ever bench pressed was 380 pounds for two reps. Wow, Katie, that's just like you. <laughs> there you go, there yes, you go. Yes, it yeah. is. Ever real... heard of a two pound weight? Yeah. Okay. Have you ever okay. touched you one of books. those? <laughs> Have you ever touched <laughs> What do you call them? <laughs> books. books. Oh, wow. Yeah. So something I want to get into is the designation of natural bodybuilding competitions and not natural. For the not natural ones, do they flat out say use steroids or is it an unspoken rule that it's fine? It's unspoken. It's unspoken. Basically they call it tested and non-tested events. The philosophy there of course is people are not going to pay to see a body that you can see at the beach. When you talk about a person who's on steroids and using other performance enhancing drugs, these guys can walk around five foot four, 260 pounds. And the idea of course is it's an extreme sport. Is it possible knowing what you know about the body to get as big naturally as you can on steroids? Yes, but not for everyone. Okay. Mm -hmm. What steroids really do is they overcome genetic limitation. People believe, well, you can't get that big lifting weights. Well, yes, you can. The biggest I've ever been when I competed uh, in the state championship and after that, I weighed 227 pounds. Mm -hmm. But to do that, I had to eat 10 times a day. I had to work out 10 hours a week. And I had to sleep eight to 10 hours a day. It just takes a lot longer and there is a limit. Sure. But can you get comparable? Absolutely. What made you make the decision to say, I want to do this naturally? For me, it's, it's, it adds to the extremeness of the situation. I had three training partners at one point, a guy for the morning, a guy for in the evening, another guy for the next wow. day on the weekend. Yeah. All of them were on steroids. None of them could lift the weights. So you I mean you had three partners because no one could keep up with you and do it as much as exactly you? Exactly. Wow. So. What is your, I know you don't drink or have soda. What is your treat? Like a low-cal almond butter? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I will sometimes go ahead and have chocolate for a day or two, which is unusual. For a day or two. That's crazy. I, I literally said before you came out, I was like, my favorite treat is a milkshake, and then I dunk hot Cheetos in there. <laughs> I'm gonna have to have my wife try this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when you're getting ready for a competition, like, what's the process? Definitely gotta get all the hair off. Go over your music, so you hit your poses on the uh, cue. Yeah. Is that a sort of, like, Vogue situation? <laughs> People can get creative. It's you take your personality and your physique, and you mesh them into your art. Yeah. The idea of bodybuilding is, of course, to create the illusion of a taper. So right. you need to have a bigger shoulder structure. Right. Uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger was 
well known for what they call the three quarter back shot, which is he would stand in one position and twist his body to emphasize how small his waist oh. was, oh, wow. which made his shoulders look even bigger. That's what I do in photos. <laughs> I like a large shoulder. <laughs> now, where do you get your speedos? Well, Victoria's Secret. <laughs> <laughs> is there a color scheme you're really like into? I just go with what fits. The very first time I went to a professional competition and they had a tent set up outside in Redondo Beach and they were selling posing trunks and the lady hands me these posing trunks. Now I'm new to this like anybody else, so I'm looking at it like anybody else would. Yeah. I said, uh, you have a bigger size? Yeah. <laughs> and she says, oh, one size fits all. One size did not fit all. Yeah. And those are the only trunks I have for the competition. <laughs> did you slip out? I, well, I was never fully in. That works at the gay club. <laughs> you know, if you got a lot of tips, that's great. <laughs> so can I ask, this is definitely a lifestyle for you, and then you compete, is there um, a ca career goal? No, um, I've never had a career goal. I have been featured in a muscle and fitness magazine before. Like I said, I'm a physicist, herpetologist, uh, martial artist. I open a lot of doors for myself. What this is really about is making sure that as I get older, I don't have to watch my body decline. You definitely break that stereotype in, of... Uh, if you're big, you're dumb. Yes. Yeah. Which is what I thought you'd be. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> But exercise... Like blondes. Yeah. Right. Please. She's not a real so blonde. Good. Well, Dennis, since you've really enlightened us about this, we wanted to see if you would teach us a few of the poses. So uh, walk us through how we need to prep. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do, grab this. This is called Protan, this is competition color. You basically spray this into your uh, mitt and you can rub that on and it darkens the skin and allows the skin to absorb the light better. So you're gonna constantly try and add more and more layers so you get a really dark sheen. This would work best if we had muscles to show right. off the competition, <laughs> right? Oh wow, better. look at that. You wear bronzer, you know how to do it. You don't want to look flat on camera. Yeah. So you would add a little bit of sheen of something as simple as pan. Just a light, light. Um, I'm gonna be slipping, oh God. Oh. You're gonna take some oh, of mine. Hi. Yeah. <laughs> the next thing you're gonna do is you need to pump up. So I'm gonna okay. demonstrate okay. some basic push-ups okay. here, right? So first one is a toe touch. We touch our toes, or. That's basic? We do a nice 180 rotation there. Okay. okay. <laughs> Try the queen's like push up. <laughs> Take your whole body off the ground, touch your toes. There you go, open me. Okay. <laughs> so now the next thing you gotta do is you gotta work on your posing routine. Okay. okay. So, you, so there are classical poses and then there are modern mandatory poses. Your modern mandatory pose is, of course, the one everybody's familiar with your front double bicep. So that's where we're gonna flex our legs. We're gonna tighten our abs, suck the stomach in, bring our arms up, and then we're gonna flare the lats, and we're gonna hit that front double flare bicep Flare your shot. freaking lats, Kate. From there, you're gonna take your hands, put them on your hips. Bring your elbows back, and as you bring your elbows back, open up your lats again. Then you have classic poses, where you twist your waist to make your waist look real tiny. Okay. And the way you do that, is you pick a little stance that shows off the definition of the leg, okay. and then you pop one of those big biceps up, pop another one out, and twist, and then you flex and show them those big guns. Yeah. And then you take your hand around and sweep under and show them that three-quarter back shot. There you oh, go. Yeah. You put one foot back and you flex your butt cheeks so they can see your hamstring <laughs> and all your definition from the back too. Yeah. And then you throw your hands down, which flexes all your back muscles. In jazz hands. Yeah, in That's jazz right. hand formation. That's right. And you do that bicep again, but you flex all the arms and flare the lats. There you go. <laughs> and do that back pose one more time where you're gonna do the lat. So pull back, make that crispy, and you pop it out. And everybody sees how wide you are, how big the shoulders are, and how tiny that waist is. Yeah. Now, you have to end with the one everybody wants to And they literally name the pose the most muscular pose. If you pick your leg that looks the best. And before you do the pose, you show how much muscle you have on the bone. So you literally do this. Oh. And then you lock it up. Oh. And then you flex every muscle in your body. Show them the traps and the biceps and the triceps. Show them the pecs. Show them the abs and the external obliques. And shake and let them know I'm the meanest thing out there. Hey and guys. how to do it? You guys did fantastic. We're ready, for, we're ready for a competition. Hey, I'm big high fives all so around. Much. Awesome. Katie, what did you learn today? I learned that the male body can actually be beautiful. What'd you learn? I learned that you don't want to be best friends anymore. Fuck you. Jonathan, 
Well, till next time. <laughs> Nailed it. Best friends. <laughs> <laughs>